Norway is a land of unparalleled beauty, wealth, and mystery. Yet given its off-the-grid status, as well as how expensive it is to even visit, most people know little about it. We seek to remedy that ignorance with 10 things you didn't know about Norway. The cost of living in Norway is known to be one of the highest in the world. Oslo is specifically recognized in a variety of surveys as being one of the most expensive cities in the world. Mercer's Cost of Living Survey for 2015 ranked Oslo as the 38th most expensive city in the world out of 207 cities, ranking higher than Paris, Melbourne, and Washington, D.C. While Norwegians themselves earn high salaries and the high tax burden pays for their well-functioning welfare system, it cannot be denied that Norway is an expensive place to live or even visit. So if you ever want to experience paying something like $15 for a beer, then you might want to head on over to Oslo to get that experience. Despite the high cost of living, there's also a very high standard of living, and most Norwegians end up doing quite well in life, whether they earn a tremendous amount of money or not. Norway has one huge advantage compared to other Nordic countries, and that is oil wealth. In the 1960s, the Norwegian government seized control over the NCS, or Norwegian Continental Shelf, in the hopes of taking advantage of possible oil reserves that might be there and take advantage they did. The government spent a great deal of money on exploration in an effort to find the juicy oil spots, and once they did, the black gold started to flow and the rest is history. One interesting thing the Norwegian government has done in contrast to many other countries with access to large quantities of oil is to put money earned via the oil away in terms of savings. In 1990, the Norwegian government set up a sovereign oil fund, the Government Pension Fund Global, as a place to store the profits from its oil riches and save for future generations. The fund is largely financed by high oil taxes. Oil companies are taxed up to a whopping 78% of their profits from Norway oil, and the government only spends 4% of the fund's assets per year. Today, Norway has put away over $1 trillion in money saved for emergencies and future generations, and the oil seems to continue to be flowing, so there is no sign of this thrift disappearing. The Kalmar Union, called Kalmar Unionen in Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish, was a political union that from 1397 to 1523 formed under a single monarch that joined the three kingdoms of Denmark, Sweden, as well as Finland and Norway, together with the Norwegian territories of Iceland, Greenland, the Faroe Islands, and the Northern Isles. The union was not entirely uninterrupted, and there were several short breaks. Legally, the countries remained separate sovereign states but with their domestic and foreign policies being directed by a common monarch. The driving force behind its formation was to block German expansion northward into the Baltic region. And conversely, the main reason for its failure to survive was the perpetual struggle between the monarch, who wanted a strong unified state, and a Swedish and Danish nobility, which did not. Diverging interests gave rise to conflicts that would hamper the Union in several intervals. From the 1430s until its final and definitive breakup in 1523, when Gustav Vasa became King of Sweden, Norway continued to remain a part of the realm Denmark-Norway until the Oldenburg dynasty for nearly three centuries, until its dissolution in 1814. The Norwegian language conflict, called Sprostriden in Norwegian, refers to an ongoing controversy within Norwegian culture and politics related to written versions of the Norwegian language. From the 16th to the 19th centuries, Danish was the standard written language of Norway, due to Danish rule as a consequence of the Kalmar Union. As a result, the development of modern written Norwegian has been subject to controversy related to nationalism, rural versus urban, Norway's literary history, dialect versus standard language, spelling reforms, and orthography. Thus, in contrast to something akin to Hochdeutsch of Germany, Norwegian actually has two official standard variants of Norwegian. Bokmal is one variety that can be regarded as more traditional, older, and conservative, and is sometimes viewed as Norwegianized Danish, and Nynorsk is regarded as a pure form of Norwegian, more Norwegian than Danish, and has a more nationalistic flavor to it. Both variants are used, but the variety tends to be found mostly in the written language. Surveys from the early 2000s indicated that upwards of 86.3% of Norwegians use Bokmal as their primary means of written communication, with the remainder using Nynorsk, or combination of the two. Although historically there had been a great deal of tension concerning the matter, the age of conflict has long passed, and the differences in the language are more a curiosity to most than a point of contention to be fought over. These days, everyone enjoys skiing. But that might not be true had the Norwegians not founded the sport and created the tools to help people enjoy it. The word ski originally comes from the Old Norse skith, which means split piece of wood or firewood. This of course makes sense 
Given the very northern climate and abundance of snow in the country, every time an American, Italian, or German skis down a slope enjoying this winter sport, they ultimately have to thank the Norwegians for developing the ski and the activity associated with it. If you've become familiar with Scandinavian food and like it, the Norwegian food will not disappoint you. Salmon is a staple food when it comes to the Norwegian diet, with the country's long coastline and many fjords producing ample amounts of this fish. Due to the colder temperatures, the fish grow over a longer period of time, allowing them to develop a deeper and richer flavor. Meat also makes up a number of popular Norwegian delicacies, such as kjøttbollar or kitkakar. These can be described as a different version of Swedish meatballs, and those with a sweet tooth can satisfy their cravings with krumkakar, translated as curved or crooked cake. Krumkakar consists of paper-thin rolls of a waffle-like pancake, which are then filled with whipped cream or any other desired filling. Perhaps the geological phenomenon most associated with Norway, the fjord itself is a Norwegian word, which of course makes sense, given the wide-scale presence of these majestic structures. A fjord is a long, narrow inlet with steep sides or cliffs created by glacial erosion. A fjord is formed when a glacier cuts a U-shaped valley by ice segregation and abrasion of the surrounding bedrock. Glacial melting is accompanied by the rebounding of Earth's crust as the ice load and eroded sediment is removed. The foundations of fjords often reach many thousands of feet below sea level. For example, Sonja Fjord, which is the largest and most well-known fjord in Norway, as well as the second longest one on Earth, extends a whopping 4,265 feet below sea level. Within the waters between fjords, there exists an abundance of fish, such as salmon and mackerel, and opportunities to see whales. Regardless, the fjord is part of the Norwegian heritage and a testament to the beauty of the land and its people. Called Leersdal Tunnelen in Norwegian, this tunnel is the longest tunnel ever constructed in the world running a staggering 15.3 miles from start to finish. The tunnel does not have emergency exits. In case of accidents and or fire, many safety precautions have been taken. There are emergency phones marked SOS every 820 feet, which can contact the police, fire departments, and hospitals. Fire extinguishers have been placed every 410 feet, and high air quality in the tunnel is achieved two ways, ventilation and purification, and this keeps the tunnel operating at maximum performance. For such a small total population, which barely goes over 5 million people, a surprising percentage of that population is in fact not Norwegian in origin, currently making up 16.3% of the population. The five largest immigrant groups in Norway are, in order, Polish, Lithuanian, Swedish, Somali, and Pakistani. This is a huge change from previous decades, as in 1992, the immigrant population in Norway was 183,000 people, 4.3% of the total population. At the beginning of 2015, this number had risen to 815,000, or 15.6% of the total population. Immigration to Norway has increased drastically in recent years, with net immigration exceeding 40,000. Whether or not this will be a long-term benefit to Norway remains to be seen. Depending on the year of the survey taken and the study done, Norway is the most gender-equal society on Earth. But what does it actually mean? Well, on average, for every $1 a woman earned in Norway, a man earned $1.27, which translates to an average annual salary equaling about $57,856 for women and $73,257 for men. Adjusted, of course, for more hours worked by men. Just slightly under 76% of Norwegian women are part of the national labor market, while Norwegian men's participation is 80%, far better than most other countries. And women's political participation is greater than in most countries, too. Overall, being a woman in Norway is not a bad deal, and maybe even better than being a man. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists, and thanks for watching. And thanks for learning.